when your partner says that you have no empathy or that you're a narcissist or that you're emotionally abusive, it can raise so many questions. Am I really a narcissist? Did I really do those horrible things? I've had men ask me straight up, am I a monster? She describes me as this monster. Is that true? Is that who I am? You guys, I am here for you in this video. I'm going to help you understand what narcissism really is and why if you are asking the question, you probably are not one. I'm also going to help you understand what's actually happening in your relationship when your partner accuses you of being a narcissist and how you can heal from this, whether that means healing this relationship and saving this marriage, saving this relationship with this partner, or going on to have more productive, more connected, more loving, emotionally connected relationships in the future. I'm going to show you exactly what you need to know to get through this to stop doubting yourself, to stop questioning what kind of person you are, and to learn to have healthier, happier relationships in the future. So let's talk about narcissism. This is a buzzword right now, you guys. This is, it's like, Everywhere on social media, everyone I talk to, everyone is a narcissist. Anyone you don't like right now, anyone who's been mean to you or that you felt bad around is a narcissist. People's mothers are narcissists, their ex-boyfriends are narcissists, their current husbands are narcissists, sometimes even their wives are narcissists. We are throwing this word around so casually with little regard for the damage that it can do, both to the person using it as a label and to the person accused of being one. Narcissism is a disorder and it is very rare, right? A narcissistic person doesn't think about anything outside of themselves. They are incredibly self-centered and incredibly focused on their own needs, often to complete disregard of the people around them, right? They have no emotional connection with the people around them. Okay, this is not your average disinterested, emotionally unavailable boyfriend, husband, wife, parent, Right, narcissism is a diagnosable disorder that very few people actually have. What's going on is actually a classic miscommunication between men and women that is created by cultural and societal conditioning. And I know we are living in this world of gender equality and feminism and various gender identities, but most of us are still conditioned from childhood either as a man or a woman, as male or female. Yes, some things are shifting there, but these cultural ideals of what it is to be a woman and what it is to be a man have shaped the way all of us have developed. So I wanna talk about how these two kind of cultural images set up this narcissist class. So women in general are conditioned to be people pleasers to put other people's emotional needs before their own, to make people happy, to take care of others, to be caregivers, to avoid confrontation, right? So all of that social conditioning that comes in so many ways, it's not like we're just told that as children and taught that. It's a message we get from the media, from books, from fairy tales, from movies. It's subtle messaging that shapes our opinions of ourselves and our opinions of women in general. So women learn that it's important to be really emotionally connected so that we can be better caregivers, so that we can make people happy. We have to know if they're not so that we can do something about it because that's our job. That's part of our identity as a woman. Men, on the other hand, are socialized very differently. People raised as men in our society are taught that there's very few emotions it's okay for them to have, right? There are certain emotions that make a man weak, feeling sad, showing anger, being afraid, having anxiety, right? These are considered weaknesses in men and men are conditioned not to show these emotions. Really, they're conditioned not to show many emotions at all. They're supposed to be strong. They're supposed to be protective. They're supposed to offer support by providing for people financially, providing for their family. And I know you guys, these are old fashioned ideals. They are still so pervasive in our literature, in our movies, in our books, in the language we use. But if you start talking to people, you're gonna to start to see how very alive the image of the strong stoic provider man and the compassionate, loving, caregiving woman, those are still really powerful images in our society. And again, this is outdated but it still is in all of our brains. So here's what happens. Women internalize that messaging. Men internalize that messaging. So you have a man 
who's not allowed to experience emotion, and you have a woman who it's so important to have this emotional connection with people, is there any wonder that there is conflict in relationships between men and women? And guys, even if you're not in a traditional relationship, if you are in um, if you have a different gender identity, if you're not in a heterosexual relationship, these identities still come up. You have still internalized some of these beliefs about gender and what it means to be a man or a woman or a good partner in one way, and they still play out in your lives. So here's what's going on. Women don't get the connection they need. Men don't understand why women want that connection. It seems to women like a man is a narcissist and that he's not emotionally connected and doesn't have feelings and doesn't care about her. And to the man, it seems like the woman is being a little bit overly emotional, hypersensitive, and we just completely miss each other. We're like ships passing in the dark. Nobody is getting what they need. And at the core of it all, none of us have actually been taught how to deal with our own emotions. Right? Women have been taught how important it is for them to deal with other people's emotions and take responsibility for how other people feel. Men have been taught that it's really important to not have emotions. Nobody's been taught how to process their own emotions effectively. So when your partner accuses you of not having empathy or says you're a narcissist, it really has nothing to do with you and it has nothing to do with her. It's just these internalized cultural ideals that we are working off of that we have made part of our own identities that set us up to just completely miss each other and not be able to understand the other person's perspective. So if you are a man in this situation, and if you are watching this video and asking these questions, I'm gonna say there is an almost nil chance that you are actually a narcissist. So stop worrying about that. You are not a monster. You are not a bad person. You are not a bad husband or partner, right? You are someone who has been culturally conditioned, socialized from childhood, to have certain beliefs about emotion, and you have never been taught to access, process, or experience those emotions in a healthy way. So what do you do, right? This doesn't necessarily help you. Your partner still says you have no empathy and that you're a narcissist. So how can you reconnect with her? And how can you prevent somebody else, a new partner in the future, from thinking the same thing about you? A lot of the work I do, if you don't know me yet, guys, I am a relationship coach and I help people heal themselves so that they can create a strong foundation for future relationships. The men that I work with, a lot of the work we do focuses on accessing and experiencing emotion in a safe way. Because here is kind of the ironic thing, guys, and I think a lot of you will relate to this. So many men are afraid of their emotions because they haven't been feeling them. They've been suppressing them and holding them back and resisting them for so long that it feels like there's just this stuff boiling under the surface. There's anger, there's anxiety, there's fear, and there's sorrow often, a lot of grief. A lot of men have a hard time expressing and processing grief as well because it's another weak emotion. All this stuff is just simmering and it feels like if I tap in, if I let myself feel that anger, if I let myself feel that fear, it's going to consume me. It's going to take over. I'm not going to be able to shove it back into that box and go out into the world and pay the bills and go to my job and take care of my kids and do whatever it is that I need to do. Those emotions are scary because it feels like they're really powerful. Here's the thing, though. Emotions are only scary and powerful when you've been resisting them. The emotion itself is not dangerous to you. Anger is not dangerous. Anxiety is not dangerous. Those emotions blow up and take over when we don't allow them, when we resist them, when we fight them. That's why it feels like there's a simmering underneath. And the reason this happens is because those emotions are there for a reason, right? They are there to protect you or to help you achieve your goals in some way. And that might not make sense to you right now, and that's okay they are always there for a positive reason. And the secret to working with emotion and to learning to safely and fully experience your emotions without letting them take over your life is to find that positive intent. The part of you that is so angry, what does it want for you? What is it trying to get through that anger that is so important that that emotion becomes so intense? So there are a lot of ways to start to process and work with emotion. I would strongly encourage you if you have, especially if you are a man or a woman who has been suppressing emotion for a long time and not been accessing it, that you do this with somebody 
who can help you access those positive intents and keep those emotions in perspective so that they don't become frightening, so that they don't build into a panic attack or into an angry outburst. This is, again, a lot of work that I do with my clients. So if you have been accused of being a narcissist or accused of not having any empathy and you want to connect emotionally with your partners, but you don't know where to start and those emotions feel overwhelming, please reach out to me. We can always do a free session and I will help you understand how to get in touch with those emotions in a safe way. And as we're considering emotional health and what emotions really are and what they feel like, I want to take a moment to talk about empathy because what your partner thinks empathy is when they say you have no empathy, they're probably not talking about real empathy. Empathy is the ability to experience, to share in someone else's emotional experience. So girls, I'm sorry because you're not going to like me for saying this. Women really tend to abuse this notion of empathy and use it in a selfish way. I did this for a long time because I didn't understand what empathy was. And I think a lot of women very unintentionally are doing this as well, right? When we see somebody else suffering, when I see somebody who is sad or in pain, I know what being sad feels like to me. I have my own experience of that emotion. I know how it feels. I see that in them. I see that expression of grief. And I feel my own experience of sorrow, my own mental images of sorrow, my own physical experience of the emotion, my own thoughts about what it is to be sad and to miss somebody. And then when I feel that sadness, I believe I'm having empathy for the sad person I'm talking to. But I am not having empathy for them. I am not sharing their experience. I am creating my own emotional experience of sadness. And that actually prevents me from being truly empathetic to the other person because I'm assuming that I know how they are experiencing sadness. I am assuming that I know what their internal experience of sadness is, what they see, what they think, what they feel in their body. I assume it's the same as me. That is not empathy. That is imposing my experience on somebody else and assuming that that's what they're experiencing. I'm not reacting to them and their sadness. I'm reacting to my experience of sadness and what I think it's like. True empathy requires curiosity and conversation. I cannot know how you experience sorrow unless I ask you, how does it feel in your body? What are you thinking? What are you seeing in your mind's eye? If I haven't asked those questions, I have no idea what your internal experience of that emotion is. And I cannot have empathy for you. I cannot share in that experience if I don't know what it is. So when your partner says you have no empathy, she's not being ridiculous. She's not trying to be mean. She feels disconnected from you. And when she feels sad, when she feels anxious, she feels like you aren't recognizing that emotion in her. And she might be right. Because a lot of men I talk to are like, look, I intellectually, I can empathize with my wife. Like, I understand she's not happy, but I don't know what she's feeling. That is like the most honest thing that you can say. You don't know what she's feeling for two reasons. One is because you are somewhat out of touch with your own emotions. So you don't experience empathy the way she does, which isn't real empathy, right? Her experience is, well, I know what it feels like to be sad. So I assume that's what this person feels. If you're a man who's been socialized that it's not okay to be sad, you don't really have a good experience of what sad is because you've stifled that, you've shut that down. So you see someone else who's sad and you're like, hmm, I don't really know what that feels like because you are out of touch with your own sadness. So in the sense that she's describing it, she might be right. You don't have the kind of empathy she's talking about because you don't have your own experience of that emotion to compare to theirs. But you guys, that's not real empathy. That's just her imposing her experience. You can't do that. So she's right, you don't have the kind of empathy like the way she defines it. What you do have is the ability to have a compassionate conversation with that person and find out you can have real empathy by asking, you look sad, how are you feeling in your body? What, what are you thinking? What are your thoughts? Tell me your thoughts right now. What do you see in your mind's eye? You know, maybe they're seeing an image of their dying grandmother. Maybe when your wife is anxious, she's seeing a stack of bills piling up. You have no idea if you don't ask her. That is real empathy. And the beautiful thing about that is it doesn't require you to even get in touch with your emotions. I'm 
recommend that you do, you guys. It will change your life to learn to experience your emotions in a healthy way and to process them. So I do recommend that you learn to get in touch with and start to understand what anger is to you, what anxiety is for you, how sadness feels in your body. That is such important work that I would encourage you to do if you've been stifling emotions. But it's not truly necessary for empathy. Real empathy is curiosity. What are you experiencing? I can't share your inner experience of emotion if I don't know what it is. So if I want to have empathy, I need to know what are you thinking? What are you seeing in your mind's eye? What are you feeling in your body? That is the only way I can share in that experience to any extent. I can never fully feel what you're feeling because it's not in my body. But I can think the thoughts you're thinking. I can imagine the image you're seeing. And I can start to get a sense of what you're going through. And it is amazing when you start to have empathy in this way and you ask people these questions, the connection you can create between the two of you goes so much deeper because you are now actually connecting. Instead of like what most people talk about empathy is really just two people in a room being sad in their own ways and having no idea what the other person is going through. Like if we could see a video of both of their internal experiences, they're not matching up. When you start to talk, you can actually start to match up those internal images and have true empathy. So guys, what I'm saying is your wife is right. You don't have empathy the way she's talking about it, but she doesn't have real empathy either unless she learns to ask these questions. So there's just so many levels of misunderstanding about human experience and real emotions. Like we are all human beings. We have mental, we have inner experiences. We call them like a map of reality. We all have a map of reality. We're all walking around with mental images, with thoughts in our heads, with feelings in our bodies. Even if we're out of touch of, of, with them, you guys, they're still there, those emotions in your body. We're all walking around with this incredibly specific internal experience that is different from that of every other person around us. And then we have this whole cultural story about women being sensitive and in touch with their emotions and being caregivers and people pleasers and men needing to be strong and stoic and not show emotion because that makes them weak. It's like this perfect storm, right? We're all in our own little internal world. We're operating out of these like deeply internalized, outdated stereotypes about who we are and what that looks like. It is no wonder that we are clashing with our partners, that women are freaking out and men are narcissists and emotionally abusing me. And men are like, I have no idea what she's talking about. I don't even know what that feels like. like this is, none of this is your fault. None of this is her fault. This is all just like the perfect storm of misunderstanding. So you guys, I hope this video was helpful for you to understand that you are not a narcissist. You are not lacking empathy, right? You are a human being having a very specific internal experience that is influenced heavily by internalized social ideals and cultural conditioning. And if you want to have healthier, stronger, happier relationships, the two things you can do, the two best things you can do are one, start to experience your own emotions in a safe way right, which is getting in touch with the positive intentions behind them and honoring those emotions for being there in the first place. If this is daunting to you, reach out to me. I can help you work through all of this. I can guide you through this process of how to get in touch, especially with intense emotions. If you have old grief, if you have deep anger, anything that is like frightening to confront, please reach out and I will help you get through it. The second thing you can do is to intentionally practice true empathy by having compassionate conversations with the people you care about, by getting curious, what is their internal experience? What is their map of reality in that moment? This is a beautiful gift to give to your children when they are experiencing an emotion, we so often tell children, oh, don't be sad, don't cry, it'll be okay. Oh, you shouldn't get angry like that that's not helping them. The way to help them is to be with them in that emotional experience. How are you angry? How does it feel in your body? What are you thinking? Are you seeing something in your mind's eye? In that way, true empathy helps another person process their emotional experience. That is a real gift of true empathy. And it is a beautiful thing to do with a child or with a partner or any loved one. 
Empathy is not sitting in your own anger, imagining that that's what the other person's anger feels like. That is not empathy. Empathy is getting into their experience of that emotion and understanding it fully, which helps them understand it fully. And it will help both of you not only connect more deeply, have a richer relationship, but you're giving them this gift of helping them process their own emotions, which will then inform you in the way you process your emotions. So it's like this beautiful circle when we give true empathy to other people. But I wanna tell you right now, if you've been accused of being a narcissist and told you have no empathy, do not internalize those labels because believing those things about yourself, it's not gonna help you heal. It's not gonna help you build strong relationships in the future. All you need to do is learn to process your emotions and learn to get curious about other people, which you can do even if you haven't processed your own emotions yet, because all you have to do is ask a few questions. All right, guys, it's a lot of information in this. Book a free strategy session with me. Let's talk through this, see what's going on with you, and I will show you a path through all of this to create a strong, healthy emotional foundation for all of your future relationships. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Hope this helps. Leave me a note in the comments and subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, I'll be doing a lot more just like it. All right, guys, have a wonderful week.